Hello all, welcome to The Truth Show. In this video, I will be talking about the life and legacy of Quincy Jones, who ignited many careers, but his life seems to always have been a mystery. We hear things, but we really don't know what's really going on. Now you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Here we go again. I mean, this is The Truth Show, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is a true show. Oh, yes. Quincy Delight Jones was born on the south side of Chicago on March 14, 1933. The son of Sarah Francis, who was a bank officer and apartment officer, and to Quincy Delight Jones Sr., who was a semi-professional baseball player and carpenter from Kentucky. Quincy Jones family stems from the line of slaves. Quincy is mixed with European, like most blacks, and with English, French, Italian, and Welsh ancestry through his father. Quincy never learned to drive because of a bad car accident he had at the age of 14 years old. Moving around long here, because I'm sure a lot of you don't care about all of this. In 1953, Jones traveled with jazz band handler Lionel Hampton for the European tour of the Hampton Orchestra. That changed his view of racism of the United States. Here's what he said. It gave you some sense of perspective on past, present, and future. It took the myopic conflict between just black and white in the United States and put it on another level because you saw the turmoil between Armenians and the Turks and the Cypriots and the Greeks and the Swedes and the Danes and the Koreans and the Japanese. Everybody had these hassles and, and you saw it was a basic part of human nature. These conflicts, it opened my soul. It opened my mind. Then he played the trumpet for CBS in 1956 for Elvis Presley for his Heart to Break Hotel song. That made number one, as you know. Heck, after that he took off and everyone was asking him to play for them. By 1961, he was the vice president of Mercury, becoming the first black person to do this job. However, the one thing Quincy didn't do was forget about his people, but he still composed others despite race. So he didn't have a tunnel vision. Here is some of his work. Quincy Jones became so famous by 1962, he produced over 4 million singles. Yes, 4 million selling singles for Leslie Gore. Heck, he also produced Michael Jackson's Thriller and the soundtracks for The Wizard of Oz, believe it or not, and The Wiz. Oh, yes. He also worked very close with Frank Sinatra. Will Smith, of course, for The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He was quoted saying this about the Beatles, and I quote, Worst musicians in the world. And compared to him, I agree. Quincy literally shaped music and television today. The man is amazing. He continued to work with and dabble in various of other projects throughout the decades, ranging from music, movies, TV shows, um, NASA, believe it or not, politics, world affairs, civil rights, etc. So on and so forth with many, 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 many career endeavors. Let's get personal and scandalous. Now, of course, with great achievement like this comes with great benefits and a lot of women. And Quincy was known for his women and many kids. Oh, yes. But let's put a pin on that for now, okay? You see, Jones was introduced to heroin from Ray Charles at the age of 15 years old. Oh, yes. The Ray Charles movie somewhat revealed their close relationship, but leaving out the heroin details. I mean, Quincy wasn't having that. Anyway... He quits allegedly after he fell down a flight of stairs. No age of when that happened. Quincy isn't very religious. He had many objections towards the Catholic Church and their way of doing things. He said, and I quote, Their churches are built upon the notions of money and fear, smoke, and murder. 
Oh, I'm not done yet. Because Quincy has always claimed to have knowledge of the truth of the Kennedy assassination, stating his belief that mobster Sam Giacana was responsible, as well as outing sexual relationships with Marlon Brando, had with James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, and Marvin Gaye. Oh, yes. Oh, and you know that this may be true because he had an inside look of what really went on behind the scenes. I'm just saying. In the same interview, Jones stated he dated Avaka Trump, despite expressing disdain for her father. And he probably did date Avaka Trump. A lot of people have um, kind of verified and agreed with him on that and can pretty much give notion that they too did, in fact, date. Yeah. Anyway, Quincy suffered a brain aneurysm back in 1974 that was due to his heavy workload and stress. He hated to say no to people. I mean, this was so threatening whereas his family started planning his memorial service and get this. He even attended this memorial service with his neurologist by his side and Richard Pryor and Marvin Gaye and Sidney Poitier. But thankfully, he lived, which brings us to many scandals that involved him. For example, it was a long-standing rumor that made rounds after the vulture piece gained traction was that Quincy had molested R&B singer Tevin Campbell. And Campbell was a minor at this time. Campbell, who Jones called an underrated musician, I completely agree, in a vulture interview, took the Twitter to address the rumors after they began to resurface. Here's what he said. Now I'm trending, folks. We'll really say something disgusting things. Tevin was molested by Quincy. Get the out of here with the devil. He continued several laughing emojis accompanied with the tweet. Campbell also tweeted a quote from Jones himself. God is pushing the bad in our face to make us fight back. That's pretty, pretty, pretty true. I agree with that so much. It seems judging from this, when he gave representations to Quincy Jones and his much, much, much handprint on music industry and black culture, period. They had to, you know, annihilate him. They did the same thing with Michael Jackson, all the legends. I mean, they did it all the time. It's starting to get so freaking predictable. It's ridiculous. I mean, Quincy may have been a player, tough when it comes to business and probably even womanizer and more. But he wasn't a child molester. He liked women, not little boys or girls. Which brings us to what I was saying about his millions of kids and wives. Yes, Jones was married three times and he has seven kids. His first wife was with Jerry Caldwell. They were married from 1957 to 1966. They had one daughter. They divorced because he got Carol Reynolds pregnant <laughs> while they were still married. And he had a daughter with her too. His second marriage was with Swedish actress Eula Anderson. They were married between 1967 to 1974. They had a daughter and a son who became a music producer, just like his father. Oh, he was so done with this marriage, whereas the day after the divorce, his third marriage was with actress Peggy Lipton. They had two daughters who became actresses, believe it or not, and they divorced in 1989. Then he went to Germany and dated actress Natasha Kenzi, may have mispronounced the name, from 1991 to 1995. And he had another daughter with her and that daughter became a model as seven kids. But here's a tricky part. Despite Quincy Jones working with many people of color, heck, many races, remember I told you he didn't have tunnel vision, he never dated any black women. He married women with any other race, aside from black or colored women. Yeah, Tupac was one of the few celebs who called him out about this, but despite this, he was iconic and he did fight for many causes. One of many was his lawsuit regarding the late Michael Jackson music that was being overturned by California Appeals Court. You see, in 2017, Jones won $9.4 million for Jackson's estate after songs he produced were used in projects like This Is It. And a pair of Cirque du Soleil shows. He originally asked for $30 million, but he reduced it to $9 million. It seems that the court said that the jury misinterpreted a contract, which was supposed to have been interpreted by the judge. And at the end of the day, he got what he was owed. One of few black men, musicians, to fight big conglomerates, okay? Record companies and the courts. And when? Despite him being underpaid for his work. 
you know, for Michael Jackson. But at the end of the day, he wanted justice, and that's what he got. Quincy may have only dated white women or any race other aside from his own race, or have been a stern and serious businessman, but he created many stars over the decades. His story should be told. He's a legend and a gifted musician behind the singer. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye.